Shannon, thank you so much. Well, Liz, you're here with me, and you know the Pope, he's getting all this praise by the Castros in Cuba for his anti-capitalist stance. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who doesn't sound very welcoming uh, for free market capitalism. How much does that affect his popularity? And walk us through some of his positions. Well, you know, a lot of people are in, in America are not happy with that. And when you consider that half a dozen popes for, you know, about a century or earlier, uh, starting with Pope Leo, started to say, uh, listen, you have to watch out for the serious, violent dangers of socialism and communism, uh, you know, through Pope and Pope Pius and St. Pius and also, uh, you know, Pope John the 23rd and Pope John Paul the second and Pope Benedict. All of them said communism and socialism is terrible, is bad for humanity. It creates poverty. It creates rampant income inequality. Uh, mortality rates skyrocket under those systems. Whereas this pope, you know, in, in his own backyard, free market capitalism was never allowed to flourish. Right. Instead, it intense Argentina, by right? The way. In Argentina and on the rest of South and Latin America, uh, intense mar uh, government intervention in markets you know, uh, it, there. It's interesting you say that and you bring that up because you think about Latin America today, and I spent a lot of time in Brazil, uh, where I did a story on this. In fact, the growing number of Catholics that have turned to the evangelical faith uh, because this is a faith that empowers them economically, tells them they should not have more children than they can responsibly take care yeah. of, that their job is to take care of their family and that they should try and succeed. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, very different than the Catholic message that you see there uh, in, in the Latin American church. And so as a result, Liz, there is an evangelical church on nearly every single block when you go out yeah, to these right. neighborhoods uh, outside Rio or outside uh, Sao Paulo. Yeah, that's right. And in fact, here in the United States, for every, according to Pew, no pun intended, but Pew polling, you know, one uh, every time one Catholic leaves, it looks like, um, or rather one Catholic uh, person joins the Catholic faith, six or seven leave the Catholic faith. They switch mm -hmm. or they just become non-affiliated. And, you know, they're really turned off by the systematic cover-up of uh, the rape of children by the Catholic Church mm -hmm. and the fact that the Catholic Church has amassed a powerful amount of money. They do a lot in the way of helping the poor. Absolutely. Uh, they are really uh, a, part, a critical part of the social safety net. But, you know, they, they, when you talk to mainline Catholics, they're not too happy with the Pope or any pope living in the Vatican with a vast art oh, collection hey. and tremendous amount of wealth. I mean, they say to me all the time, why does the Vatican sell off part of that if they really want to help the poor? Um, and we didn't even get to the whole Catholic guilt thing. <laughs> yeah, there it is. You were raised Catholic, right? Absolutely. I was raised Catholic as I well. I love my faith, and I, I'll by the way. I'll tell you, my grandmother would have been absolutely thrilled that the pope was coming here to the United States. It's yeah. a big week, everyone. Okay, let's.